Hi, this is Barbara Bingham uh, from Jason Takes Manhattan, and I'm here with Slasher Pepper, and I think this is just the beginning. Enjoy. <laughs> hey guys, Slasher Pepper, and welcome to another video. Today it's another interview, this time with Barbara Bingham from the Friday the 13th, Jason Takes Manhattan. How are you doing? I'm really good. How are you? I'm doing good as well. I'm also ready. With, All right. Um, That's great. great Jason Takes Manhattan shirt. So, Love um, it. Yeah, thank you. <laughs> I was wondering, what are you up to nowadays? Uh, look, I've actually got a lot going on considering it's, you know, COVID pandemic time. Um, I uh, wrote and produced and starred in a, a thriller. It's kind of a Hitchcockian thriller called Over the Edge. And um, that's going to be coming out uh, soon. Um, we have uh, a premiere coming up, but it's not official to talk about yet. <laughs> um, but yeah, so that's happening. And then I did another horror um, anthology series called Dead House Dark. And um, that's premiering at the Con series in Con in October. Awesome. So, yeah, yeah. You got a lot going on, indeed, for uh, for these crazy times. Uh, absolutely, yeah. No signs of slowing down. <laughs> no, you bet. Not a, not a chance. <laughs> so going back to um, Jason Takes Manhattan, how did you get the role of Colleen? <clears throat> well, it was one of those... Um, typical actor stories. I went in and, and read for the role with the casting director, David Cohn, and then um, got a call back with Rob Hedden. And he and I connected at the callback and he really felt that I understood Colleen and got Colleen and had all the qualities. So that was that. Awesome. Sounds good. Yeah. And um, do you have any fond memories from uh, filming the movie? Oh, look, it was a blast. I mean, being on that boat was, you know, it was just so much fun. It was, it was crazy. And it was, we shot it up in, um, in Canada, in Whistler, and it was freezing cold. And, um, um, and we, yeah, so it was, and we were sometimes in really tight quarters with, Scotty Reeves and and VC and and the captain of the boat and we're in the little teeny tiny trying to you know talk like this and how you doing I'm like <laughs> yeah I think there's somebody coming so yeah but it was fun we had a we had a great time so you also stayed on the actual boat during filming no 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 okay. we drove <laughs> yeah no we drove another forty five minutes back to the hotel every day right. and then, yeah yeah. No, no. Yeah. In the comforts, in the comforts of a of a hotel. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> right. <laughs> no boats with with serial killers lurking around. <laughs> no. Uh. 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 <sighs> and um, what was your favorite scene to film? Well, my favorite scene to film was probably in the back seat of the of the police car with um with peter mark richmond and um jensen and i must have been scotty reeves when um uh vc's head is up on the dashboard and we're trying to get out i never realized that that cop cars don't have, you know, handles in the back. That that was news to me. Like, it never, yeah, it just never, never registered in my right. in my realm. <laughs> and um, so yeah, so we were like really trapped, and um, we had a stunt driver driving us really fast, and so it was pretty real. It was like we're we're going really fast, and we're heading towards a wall, and we can't get out. <laughs> So, um, yeah, that was crazy. 
And when um, the night they were shooting the fight scene up on the roof with, um, with Kane and VC, you know, knocking, knocking VC's head off, it was my night off. And I still came to set because I, there was no way I was going to miss watching <laughs> that being filmed. <laughs> yeah, that's, that's a fan favorite uh, kill. <laughs> uh, just it was, and it was fantastic to watch. It was fantastic. How did they do that scene? Um, well, look, they boxed, you know, across. And then, you know, I mean, the terrible thing was there were all these, these heads lined up and they had to decide, you know, which because they had to take the head and have it go over the over the side of the building and uh so yeah it was funny just seeing all of these little vc heads <laughs> lined up <laughs> <laughs> yeah it must have been funny it was it really was sure wasn't a waste of your uh day off i assume no ab no absolutely not i was really i was so thrilled to be there that was that was epic, actually. And, um, you know, fans seem really mixed on this film. No, people either love it or, or really dislike it. Uh, I was yeah. wondering, what are your own thoughts on the film? Uh, look, I mean, any film I'm in, I'm, I'm going to have a, a soft spot for. Um, you know, I, I, I certainly understand the fans trying to make the connection between the, the, you know, how did the boat get out of the lake and the lake into the boat and, you know, and all that. Um, but at the end of the day, you know, is it a Jason story? And does Jason, you know, get to kill a bunch of people? Yes. And oh, yeah. are there, you know, and is it, you know, some of the best kills the you know, the, the guy getting impaled, um, falling on the boat, all that, you know, there were some really good, good kills in that movie. Really oh, good yeah. kills. Yeah, for sure. And um, yeah. a lot of people also seem to yeah. criticize the film for it not taking place in New York entirely. Um, and at the first time I had that complaint yes. as well. But the second time when you know it's yeah. less in Manhattan, you just love it. I mean, now I'm wearing a shirt. I wouldn't have expected that after the first watch. <laughs> yeah, I love it as well. well. That's good to know. That's good. Yeah, for sure. Yeah, good. Great. And um, have you seen the other Friday the 13th films? Um, I, uh, there was, I think I saw the first or second right before when I was auditioning for it so, so I could get, I could get, um, a feel for what the the movie was like, um, and and then once Kane started um, doing the the subsequent films, yeah, couldn't couldn't miss those. <laughs> <laughs> awesome. And um, what are some of your favorite horror movies in general? My favorite horror movies. Um, Look, I think my very first one, which is interesting because it wasn't really a horror, it was probably more of a thriller, was um, from the, I think from the 60s or 70s called Wait Until Dark with, um, um, oh, it's Audrey Hepburn and, oh, yeah, no, this is not good for radio or podcast. I can't <laughs> think of the name. Anyway, you, some of your fans will tell you what Wait in the right, Dark for is. Sure. Yeah. Anyway, it's um, it was really the first film where I actually jumped, you know, out of my seat. Like I and I'm a jumper. I'm 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 I part of the reason why I I can't watch a lot of horror films is because I scream very loud. <laughs> And I jumped. So <laughs> those are two not good combinations. No, for sure. Well, it is good for for the, um, I guess, for the realness when you're acting in a horror movie, you know. Well, yeah, for sure, for <laughs> sure. But not good for the guy sitting next to me. In the right. 
and maybe the, maybe the uh maybe the boom operator will be be like oh shit that was, that was loud <laughs> yeah that's exactly right that's exactly right yeah um, i did a um a romantic comedy in december and it was the first movie i didn't have to screen so that was kind of exciting <laughs> that was new <laughs> that was really new what you, you don't need me to scream come on <laughs> <laughs> that's what i'm here for <laughs> That's exactly what I'm here for. Yeah. I guess you can uh, scratch not screaming in a horror, in a movie from your bucket list now as well. That's right. That's right. <laughs> well, when we shot, when we shot over the edge, um, we shot it here at my home and I, I, um, in the film, I witness a girl getting pushed off a cliff. And in doing, seeing that, I, you know, there's a gigantic, gigantic scream in the film. And I had to send out flyers to all my neighbors not to call the police on the day we were shooting. <laughs> because I had to do these blood curdling screams over and over and over again. And I had a couple, I had a couple of neighbors, you know, text me and say, Hey, thanks for the heads up. I would have called the police. <laughs> <laughs> well, good thing you had those, those flyers out. <laughs> That's right. <laughs> so now that we're talking about things that, uh, that make you scream anyway, what are some of your own fears? My own what? Your own fears. My own fears. What do you mean? So fares. like uh, things that scare you. Oh, things that scare me. Oh, you know, oh, fears, fears, gotcha, fears. Um, you know what? I'm, I, I'm the biggest scaredy cat. Well, first of all, my son has been living here since um, COVID. And his favorite thing to do is come up behind me and go, <laughs> <laughs> and I, so, you know, I like, I, I'm a terrible, I'm coming up my stairs yesterday and a sweatshirt had fallen on the stairs and I was looking at my phone and saw the sweatshirt and went, oh! I mean, it's like, <laughs> I'm a real scaredy cat. It's, it's really bad. But any of the, you know, the, when you think somebody is dead in a, in a horror film, when you think somebody is dead and they get up and continue on, which is what Jason does. Um, that is, that, that's like, that totally gets me totally. Cause I'm, you know, I believe they're dead. They're, you know, Oh God, of course they're dead. And, um, yeah, it's the getting back up again. that, that oh. Right. <laughs> so you can't stand <laughs> next to a coffin with someone lying in it without thinking what if he gets up all of a sudden <laughs> that's right that's right <laughs> i'm back <laughs> <laughs> yes 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 so here's another oh. more general question um what makes you smile what makes me smile ah oh, look i'm a glass half full kind of person and um and even in this COVID 19 craziness that's going on in the world i still can find a lot to smile about and you know i live in sydney australia it's one of the most beautiful places on the planet and if i can just you know walk out to the beach and look at the crystal clear blue water that'll make me smile every single time so just enjoying the little things i guess Absolutely. Yeah. 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 For sure. For sure. Is there anything you would like to add to the interview? Uh, look, I saw your, um, your fantastic, uh, masks you made, uh, 2020 is a killer. Oh, right. <laughs> those, those are epic. epic Appreciate it. I, I have to say, well done well, <laughs> because 2020, is a killer or what about this one? <laughs> oh, that's awesome yeah see that's so that's just classic that's right just, yeah. well done well done appreciate whoever it designed that, whoever designed that poster would be very proud yeah yeah they actually banned that one didn't they yeah that's right 
Yeah. It's such a shame. It's, it's just a classic poster, in my opinion. It is. A, yeah. Hang on. I'll show you mine. Hang on. I'll be back. Wait. This was given to us at the... Um, oh, wow. At, how cool is that? That's we, awesome. I did the, uh, the Days of the Dead um, convention in Atlanta a couple of years ago. So, oh, yeah. I see. Was there like a reunion uh, at Days of uh, the Atlanta? Yeah, it was. It was um, the Days of the Dead. They, um, they'd been asking me to come to conventions for a while. And because of living in Sydney, it's just, you know, it's just hard. And the organizer said, look, you know, you're the only one that hasn't been to any conventions ever of the whole cast of Friday the 13th. And he said, there's people and there's fans that really want to complete their, their signatures and, and, and make and have everybody from the movie um, have, their, have their signatures and their autographs and photos and all that. So I went and it was VC and myself and Kane and Tiffany Paulson. And we had a blast we had a blast and i had two conventions set for this year in um in uh, pittsburgh pennsylvania and lexington kentucky but unfortunately ah, that's a shame they, yeah unfortunately because of covid they're not going to happen so maybe 2021 2022 we'll hopefully see. hopefully yeah and um yeah yeah this is this is brings up another question uh for you um yeah did you still keep in touch with some of the cast and crew in between um now and like meeting them again at the conventions yeah kane and i have stayed in touch all these years where we became very good friends uh when we shot the movie together and um we went out every night and we played trivia he is smart as a whip it's like <laughs> this he's unbelievable you would never know that he knows everything about everything. And um, so, yeah, we won all these, we won all these um, trivia contests night after night. It was great. And it wasn't because of me, it was because <laughs> of <him. laughs> And uh, yeah, and Rob Haddon, the director and I have stayed in touch and, and I visit him when I go to California and in a very small world. His son and my son went to the same college in oh, wow. California. It's kind of just everything. By complete accident. Yeah. Everything coming full yeah. circle, sort of. <laughs> yeah. It was just wild. Very cool. Very cool. Okay. Is there anything you would like to add to the interview? Uh, I don't think so. I, I think um, I just want to say thanks to everybody who loves Friday the 13th Part 8 Jason Takes Manhattan because. Without you guys, I wouldn't be here. So right. I really, really, I really appreciate the fans. I really do. Well, thank you so much for your time. You bet. You bet, Roger. Take care. You're pissing me off, Roger.